Hi, and happy Thanksgiving to anybody who celebrated it. Hopefully it did not end up as a dramatic Thanksgiving if you spent it with your family members. The theme of this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade was how to frighten children so their parents could go viral on social media by filming the kids crying at America's least favorite characters. Witnessing the Chucky the Doll Balloon was the most traumatic experience for children since the Barney Balloon ripped a big one in 1997. In good news, the American Music Awards were held, so I get to do another red carpet roast of so-called celebrities' horrible fashion choices. When I scrolled down and saw this chick's butt cheeks, my eyebrows raised and I thought, okay, she's going to be the first one on red carpet roast. I thought she was biracial, and I was going to say that black don't crack unless it's in the rear end, but I saw it was Brazilian singer Anita. Her dress is biracial. It reminded me of a toy I had as a kid where you would take a magnetic pen and it would move this black stuff and you could give some guy like a mustache or a goatee or some hair on the top of his head. So that was traumatic. The rapper Lotto wore a mosquito net on her head because she thought she was going to be sitting next to Machine Gun Kelly and assumed that there would be a bunch of bugs in the air who were attracted to his stank. But Machine Gun Kelly was unable to sit down because he wore an outfit that was trying way too hard. Tinashe, who, wore platform shoes, which is the only platform she has because no radio station will play her songs. I don't know what the heck the group Mainskin was wearing. It looks like shorts with pants attached and some built-in air conditioning. They are from Italy, so I guess they never got this commercial over there. We wear short shorts. If you dare wear short shorts, therefore short shorts. Next. This was the American Music Awards, not the American Goth Awards, sweetie. I had never heard of Dove Cameron, but I wouldn't be surprised if Satan has. She's not a Christian! Ah! She is dark sided too! The group TXT looked like they borrowed the Michael Jackson wax figure from Madame Tussauds. Charlie Puth arrived just in time from his previous gig at a Miami Vice convention. It looks like Paris Hilton's power went out and she was unable to finish getting ready. Also, she wore this outfit to protest the supply chain shortage of bras. Mm, no. A couple welcomed twins from embryos that were frozen 30 years ago, which is a world record. They finally hatched thanks to global warming. Here they are going through freezer withdrawal. No, they did not name their son Ice Cube after their favorite rapper. The kids' names are Lydia and Timothy. Sounds like the parents chose names that should have been frozen 60 years ago. The world's skinniest skyscraper opened in New York City and was christened by Bethany Frankel, who asked photographers, does this building make me look fat? The classic sitcom Frasier is the latest to get a reboot, but Kelsey Grammer will be the only one joining because either his cast members were not interested or dead. So if you're over 50 and white, you have something to look forward to. I'm going to be starring in a reboot of the Brandy Norwood show, Moesha, but in my version, I play a male escort with a heart of gold called Hoesha. Reality TV couple Todd and Julie Chrisley were sentenced to 12 and 7 years in prison for taking out over $30 million in fraudulent loans. Cameras were not allowed inside the courtroom, but luckily we were able to get a glimpse of what the Chrisley's reaction was thanks to this artist who only got the job because... They got rejected by Archie Comics. Tragically, the person who drew this got arrested and charged with impersonating a sketch artist, so they will be unable to graduate eighth grade this year. Good luck to the Chrisleys as they try to survive prison without Botox. The internet was triggered this week when a video surfaced of a young girl jumping up and down on a plane's food tray table without being punished by her parents, who had specifically bought tickets in the low-class cabin. Some online commenters suggested a proper punishment should have been euthanasia, or in this case, youth in North America. That was a stupid joke. That seems to be a theme of this week's episode. Anyway, upon landing, the man in the seat in front of this demon spawn on a sugar high was greeted by a ticker tape parade for maintaining his composure. A man fell off of a Carnival cruise ship into the Gulf of Mexico, but was rescued after 15 hours in the water. In the morning, in the evening, in the Gulf of Mexico, hey. People referred to it as a Thanksgiving miracle. Yeah, it's a miracle that a 28-year-old man would want to spend Thanksgiving on a floating Petri dish to Mexico. 
The man was last seen by his sister leaving a bar at 11 p.m., but she did not report him missing for 13 hours later until noon. Wow, she must have really been hungover. Was she like, eh, I'll report him missing after breakfast and lunch. Carnival Cruise updated their brochure to offer unlimited drinking, unlimited swimming, and free helicopter rescues. Three teenage girls ordered $115 worth of food from a Buffalo Wild Wings in Ohio and then ran out without paying in a dine and dash crime. The 16-year-old driver then hit the gas as one of the female employees held onto the hood of the car as police chased them. The manager called 911 and reported an emergency at Buffalo Wild Wings, to which the operator replied, Extreme heartburn? No, there's some chick on the hood of a BMW holding on for dear life as they're going 60 miles per hour in the snow. To which the operator replied, damn. So if this looks fun to you, it's going to be opening as the newest ride in summer 2023 in the parking lot of your nearest great adventure.